All right, somebody woke up in a mood. Oh, look, it's the 12 yard line. <laughs> what happened to our show? <laughs> I know where this is going. We might have to make a correction. I could have chose my words better there. <gasps> Unleash the fury, man! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hashtag Sports, where we're always trending. Make sure that you follow all of our socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, today's show is going to be sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes in association with Cryer.co. Paul, and all of our uh, episodes go to iTunes and Spotify. Paul, I looked up my RAS score the other day, and I got a negative. I'm curious to know. What is going on? Am I just that out of shape, or is it because I'm 50? Can you please tell me why I have a negative RAS score? You know what? I just want to point out that when it when there's four of us on the screen, and hey, Ryan, hey, Joe, thanks for joining. Uh, <laughs> you talking with your hands is far less intimidating because you're so much smaller <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> RAS score, I think, is something that a lot of people might hear, right? It's it's draft time, right? So it's buzzwords. People hear it. And you might not know what makes it up. And, uh, you know, can you get a negative RAS score? You can't get a negative RAS score, right? But you can get a pretty low RAS score. And we're going to oh, yes. talk about some players that have surprisingly low RAS scores and some players that have surprisingly high RAS scores and, and kind of why these things matter because mm – -hmm. You know, and and we'll start with Joe and then go to Ryan. You know, when you're a uh, when you're a young player, right? You start uh, training for the combine once the season's over, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people just kind of assume that well, they train for the combine because it's the underwear Olympics, right? Mm -hmm. But players that aren't going to the combine still train for the combine, right? Mm -hmm. So why should they do that? Like, what's the advantage to them to do that? Sure. And, and I want to make it clear, just because you have a higher low RAS score, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the play you are or are not going to be. It's not like a QBR or something like that. It, it it talks about more about your measurables and your times, right? Like your 40 times and all that. And that's partly why all these college players and, and if you're a college athlete, this isn't something you just practice as soon as college season's over. You've been practicing it, you know, the previous off season as well. Like this something, but your last year in college, that's when you really start buckling down and saying, we need to get high RAS scores. And what we're going to show is why you want high RAS scores, because you'll see a definite difference between the players who get drafted and the players who don't get drafted, because coaches, owners, GMs, they're all looking at that RAS score. And even if you, you skip out on the combine and only do it at, on your pro day, you know, that's still something that, that they're going to look at and see how you do. Um, right. And you'll you'll you will see that there are players who they don't have a RAS score. And the reason why that is, is because they didn't maybe they got injured their senior year. Right. And they just are unable to participate in the combine or in the pro day. Um, and so they won't have a RAS score necessarily. Uh, and they just kind of make it up. But, yeah, just just think about think about, you know, if you go and you go, you're going in for an interview at your job. Right. And you've been working there for, you know, four years. And now they're saying, hey, this one test is what we're going to give you. And how you do on that test is going to determine what kind of raise you get or something like that. You know, that's what this is for these kids here, too. It's like, listen, you guys got to study, got to work hard, just like in anything else in life, except for this is life altering money. So obviously the expectations <laughs> a little bit higher. Right. And RAS stands for relative athletic score, right? So this isn't like the wonder lake. This isn't, mm -hmm. this isn't a written test, right? These are all production and, and athletic profile tests that are very common to a lot of people that follow the draft, right? Mm -hmm. So Ryan, looking at something like RAS, right? When you look at the skills that make it up, uh, why don't we go through those quickly, right? So when we look at what a RAS score is, what is that actually comprised of? Right. So it takes um, a combination of measurables and the basically it's, it's split into three areas, three areas. Right. There's composite size, which is height, weight and bench. So it's how big are you? How not hand size. Hand size isn't not a part hand of that. Size. It's not included, <laughs> no. arm, hand size and arm length are referenced, but they don't contribute to that. <laughs> um, the next is what's called explosion grade, which is your vert and your broad jump. Right. How, you know, how explosive are you um, out of a, a set? And then there's your speed grade, which is broken down between your 40 and then the splits, your 20 yard, your 10 yard split. 
And then mm-hmm. basically what it does is it takes the measurables for each player and compares them to every other player in the NFL at that position. Mm-hmm. And it compa- and, and basically, again, provides that relative score. So where are you in relation to your peers? of drafted Mm -hmm. players at the time they were drafted at the position they were drafted to play. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's kind of how it breaks down. So you see a guy like, again, Mario's got it up, right? Dorian Williams Mm -hmm. in terms of composite size, he rates 4.7 in height, 3.1 in weight compared to other linebackers in every draft class since 1987. So Matt, the the guy who owns this is, is Kenley and it's, at math bomb if you want to follow him on twitter he's a really good follower he posts all the raz scores out there but he's compiled everyone from 1987 forward so when you see a guy and it's like oh is is six one is that small for a linebacker is it big for a linebacker pull up the raz and you'll see exactly where, where it sits mm-hmm. same thing with explosion composite and then he has a formula that basically aggregates that out and says where is he in relation when you take all these factors together in relation to all other linebackers. So Dorian Williams, although small, because of his other scores, he sits higher 8.81 in a relative athletic score uh, when compared to other linebackers. Right, and on the scorecard, the one thing you're not seeing is the agility section, and that is just the shuttle and the three-cone drill. Right. Right. So that's not included here because Dorian Williams didn't do them. Right. So uh, those are excluded from his scorecard. But you'll see, you know, the the shuttle and three cone drill are are very common amongst uh, offensive linemen and wide receivers. Right. Like they're mm-hmm. very, very, very common to run a linebacker. I understand why a linebacker would see no benefit from doing a three cone or a shuttle. Right. There, there's mm-hmm. really no benefit for them. There. Quarterbacks typically don't. run. Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. So some some positions aren't going to use it. Right. So right. when we look at a player like Dorian Williams, an eight point eight one RAS score, that's top of the draft class for Buffalo. Right. Yeah. Like that's that's top of the draft class. Does, high RAS scores are are not super common. Right. Like if you take a look at top of the RAS scores, I think if you looked at the Bills roster, you'd be kind of surprised who the top RAS scores on the team are. But looking at the draft class, you see Dorian Williams, 8.81. Nick Broker, 8.23. Again, value pick, late round. Justin Shorter, 7.94. You know, Again, value pick, late round. Alex Austin, 7.7.3, late round. And then you see Kincaid and Osiris Torrance. Uh, Kincaid doesn't have a RAS score because he didn't do any of those. Uh, it didn't do any of those activities and Osiris Torrance ranks a 6.14. And that's why when you hear people talk about, well, Osiris Torrance is a good football player, but he's not exactly an athlete. This is that test that tells you that he's not exactly an athlete, right? Like, well, for context too, it's important to keep in mind that the the league average at the guard position is 7.48. So when mm -hmm. you take it in context, he's not, he's not too far off the league average. Whereas you look at a Dorian Williams, when you look at his metrics again, the league average at linebacker is 7.62. So he's actually mm-hmm. higher than the league average. He's more athletic right. than the average linebacker at the time they were drafted. So mm-hmm. it's always important to keep things in perspective when you're looking at the Raz. It's not an end all be all. It doesn't mean that he's going to turn into a pro bowler. But again, if you go to the, the website, the Raz website and, and Ken Lee posts a lot of stuff throughout the season on it, there's a very strong correlation between a high RAS score and long-term sustained success at a high level in the NFL. And it's really mm-hmm. interesting to read, read through that. And that's mm-hmm. why, that's why so many draft people focus on the RAS when these guys get, get drafted. Well, and Mario, if you're a general manager, right. And you've got, you know, a 347 players eligible for this year's NFL draft. <laughs> don't you think the RAS score kind of gives you the opportunity to at least put a mark in the sand as far as what you're going to look at and where you're going to focus first, right? I've, if there's names that you're not super familiar with from these smaller colleges. I think it it, it, pay, it plays 100% in the rounds five through seven when you start mm-hmm. to get down to the nitty gritty of some of the players, because obviously the first three rounds, you you know what you need for your team and what you need to put on your squad in order to, whether or not you're recy- or cycling out of position, you have to get a quarterback or anything that is concerned with all the 32 teams. I think when you get into the later rounds, you're like, okay, we could take a shot at this guy. We could take a shot at this guy. I'm not really sure. I watched the tapes on him. I seen him play. What's his RAS score? I mean, you can talk about that and you can, you can line it up, but I think, you know, it was interesting to see Dorian's. If we, if I can go back to that, um, that wasn't it. It's right here. So it's weird because you see 
He said he said it's all the players that were drafted since 1987 until now. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the, when you look at his size, six one two twenty eight. It. I don't think that the RAS score specifically accounts for the change of the changing of the guard in the NFL right now. I mean, if you if you were to look at all four of us, according to the BMI, we're all like obese according to the BMI because <laughs> it was created in 1960 or something. Um, but I think I think what they're going to have to do is that I think they may have to just reformat it. Like like you said, like um, like Ryan said. You know, Osiris Torrance is a six point one four. However, the the league average now currently, you know, what I mean, not oh, so drafted, you're like in the last yeah. five years, right? Yeah. You're thinking like yeah. in the last five years. Yeah, I, I agree with probably, you. Linebackers have gotten smaller over have. the last few years. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I so I think if they were to kind of reformat it, I think that's what that's what it would happen. But to answer your original question, yeah, I think a lot of player, a lot of coaches are like, listen. If I could just teach him what to do in our offense or our defense or what's going on, I don't have to worry about his athleticism. Mm-hmm. He's like, and I think Dorian Williams, albeit higher than than a fifth round pick, what I think his RAS score did play a significant role in Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott, and the Buffalo Bills organization taking a shot at this kid. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if we take a look at the current Bills roster, right, or at least the Bills roster that Raz posts, Raz posts it, just a massive collection of data from the Bills roster, right? Mm-hmm. Amongst the top of those players are Spencer Brown, Von Miller, and... O'Doyle oh, Rules. Yeah, no, O'Doyle oh, Rules, Tommy Doyle. That's right. So, you know, again, three players that... Uh, two of them I don't think a lot of people would expect. I think a lot of people would look at Von Miller and say, yeah, Von Miller should absolutely be at the top of Rad scores. That's why you got him, right? But Spencer Brown and Tommy Doyle, a little bit of a different circumstance. Now, uh, Joe, when you look at mm-hmm. Spencer Brown and Tommy Doyle, what's one thing that they both have in common besides playing offensive line? Size. They're huge. They're huge. <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> They yeah. aced that part of the RAS score, I promise. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's they're huge. Game. Yeah, they're huge. And the rating for RAS is 1 out of 10, right? Mm-hmm. And Spencer Brown is a 10. <laughs> just just a pure freak across the board. If you click his player page, Mario, for Spencer Brown. I'll make sure to share it for you guys. Great, so. thank you. Um, so Spencer Brown's individual page is just is just this toxic Avenger green across the board. <laughs> right like <laughs> it's gaudy it is gaudy <laughs> yeah it's a lot it's a lot to look at right here you go wow i know is that ridiculous <laughs> that is pretty he's a perfect um... 10 and he's like the 5.87 in size in in weight <laughs> and he's still a 10 he's so far off the charts right on Everybody everything else, else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right well, every time you guys say 10 i think of billy bob from varsity blues a 10 a 10 a Ten. <laughs> ten. 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 It's a ten. The guy's is six eight three eleven. He's got over a thirty inch vert. I mean, he ran I under mean, a, a five forty. A a, th- a one point six nine ten yard split at three eleven is uh, absurd. <laughs> As completely well, Spencer absurd. Brown, like when you when you look at where Spencer Brown was drafted. Like mm-hmm. his RAS score combined with his draft position is screams project, right? Oh, it's sure. just screams project. Mm-hmm. It's the old mm-hmm. adage Paul used it earlier. Like you can't teach size, mm-hmm. right? I can't teach a guy to be six eight, three hundred and ten pounds, and run a four nine forty, right? Like you can't <laughs> right. teach that. That's right. a God given talent. Right. So and if still I can do, take and still do and thirty just, on the bench, right? Right. Like and, and if all I need to do is 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 take a guy that's that big, fast, strong, and just put him in front of another human being and teach him to stay in front of him and hand fight with him, like I can do that. <laughs> if I can take, you know, Mario could be the best the best blocker in the world, but at his size, he's just, you know, he's not going to be up in NFL because I can't teach him to do the rest of it. So that's where yeah. Raz comes in. It's like as these later rounds start to wane on, it's where can I get guys that have physical tools that no one else has, or maybe nobody else on my roster has? It's mm-hmm. it's like you know, like putty, right? Like where are the guys that are just like the giant chunks of clay that I can form into the rest? Because I got a bunch of guys on my roster already that are little pieces of clay, and they're really perfectly formed coming out, and those are the guys that are impact players right away. But Spencer Brown is the definition of a project. That's why Josh Allen was so high. Anthony Richardson this year, right? They're just measurables mm-hmm. off the charts and you just mm-hmm. get these scouts drooling. And it's like, if I can just teach them 
how to play football okay <laughs> the rest will take care of itself right mm-hmm. well yeah, and, and then... to break down the the splits right because i think it's important when you talk about we're talking about raz score so let's talk about the what that 40 20 and 10 yard split is right so joe when you look at the 40 20 and 10 yard split yeah. what are those like what what is the 40 20 and 10 yard split are those all different activities or is that all just a composite score from one run uh that's just your composite score from your 40 right so they at the combine uh for those who don't know they don't just have a guy with a a timer at the start finish line you know they have a guy with the timer at the 10 at at the five at the 10 at the 20 at the 25 at the 40 so that way they get a composite score uh, pretty much across the board. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a, the first 10 is going to be your first 10 yards of 40. How fast can you get to full speed, right? And then you have the 20 and then the 40. So that's what they're talking about there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for players, you know, for positions that require that explosion, right? That right. first 10, that 10 yard split's really important. Right. Like, uh, we'll take a look at some other players for the Bills that were undrafted, and you'll see there's a big gap between <laughs> their 10 yard <laughs> split and their 20 yard split and their right. 40 yard split, right? Or that 40 yard dash time. Um, and again, it'll kind of highlight, like, yeah, this player has, you know, a high football IQ, but. You know, like when you hear like when you hear the well, he has trouble getting separation at the line and then you look at his 10 yard split and mm-hmm. it's dog. Right. You go, well, OK, that checks out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's you don't and, always and it's, and it's watch a position tape. by position, right? It's yeah, it's position by right. position. So like what, yeah. so as an example, like a wide receiver that has a a slower 10 yard split, but a higher 40 yard split. That's a guy that 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 typically what you'll see the comments are will be struggles to get off the line clean. You know, mm-hmm. doesn't have a great doesn't have a great break, you know, mm-hmm. but he makes up for it in top end speed. Like th- mm-hmm. those are the types of things that you start to hear. Right. When you talk yeah. about a line, uh, an offensive lineman, if my offensive lineman's running 40 yards downfield, like we have a bigger problem. Than <laughs> things going on, right? So I'm far more concerned about a 10 yard split from a offensive lineman than I am about a 10 yard split from a wide receiver. And same thing right. with a running back. I want mm-hmm. a running back with a low 10 yard split. I'm not super concerned with his 40 i you know obviously want him to run fast but you know if he can get from zero to 60 faster than the other guys he's gonna run for quite a while before somebody runs him down so i think you got to look at different things depending on the position yeah just just for a reference for you guys we both looked at we both looked at dorian williams and spencer brown spencer brown's 10 yard split was as you can see on the screen is 1.69 dorian williams was 1.52 yeah. I mean, and there's a hundred pounds difference between yeah. the two of them. Yeah. You, you got that short area quickness, though. I mean, when you want to talk about a linebacker, I mean, that's he's point one seconds away from him mm-hmm. in a ten yard split. So that I mean, that's the difference between you know a guard shooting out and trying to get to the second level. That's one of the things that you want to see um, as far as the score goes. That's what that's what the ten yard split. That's a big part about the ten yard split. It's all it's all about explosiveness, you know. Paul, you used to talk about the RAS score goes hand in hand with the explosive factor in mm-hmm. the combine. You know, you talk yeah. about the vertical, the broad, and what are the other? Uh, was just the vertical and broad, or what else is it? Is yeah, vertical, broad, broad, and ten. Explosive. Yeah, vertical, broad, and ten yard split. Like if you really okay. want like a true explosion factor number, the, you, there's an equation for ten yard split, the broad, and and the vertical. That's why like David Johnson, when David Johnson came out, it was like you draft that guy, do whatever you can to get that guy because <laughs> that he was, he was a hog. Now, could he run in the two gap in the, you know, in it, could he run in the a gap? Could he run in the two gap? No, no, he would get, he, he constantly get tripped up. Like watching David Johnson run inside is something that makes me want to, you know, put a drill to the side of my head. But the fact <laughs> of the matter still remains that the guy in the open field was untouchable for multiple years of his NFL career. Yeah. But, if you start looking at the difference between drafted players and undrafted players, that's where things get a little dicey to take a look at a couple of the undrafted players, right? Jalen Wayne is the highest RAS score of undrafted players for Buffalo at 6.59 against Terrell Shavers at 4.36. 4.36, I think is the second highest RAS score of the oh undrafted bills players. That's a big difference, right? Ugh. That's a pretty big difference. Well, just, I don't know. And just talking about like, just looking at, as an, like, this is a good example to look at, right? Because the margin of error, and that's kind of what you were talking about, Paul, the margin mm-hmm. of error between certain positions, right? Like look at that 10 yard split line. 
Mm-hmm. Jalen mm-hmm. Wayne run one point five five ten yards split. That earned him an eight point three four. Mm-hmm. Tyler Shavers was eight one hundredths of a second slower at one point six three, and he's down to a three point three two. So that's mm-hmm. that's the difference that mm-hmm. this type of measurable puts together, and that's why this is such a high pressure time of year for these these guys because when the combine rolls around, it's it's the, the and eight one hundredths of a second could be the difference between you know, a, a RAS score of 4.36 and a RAS score of, you know, draftable. And that mm-hmm. that's, that's why this is so important to look at. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're drafting a guy in the, in the second, third, fourth round of the RAS score in the fours, you're going to get, you're going to get rolled, right? Mm-hmm. This guy better, better have had injury problems at the mm-hmm. time of testing. It's a very effective tool, but it's also a weapon. Right. Like, and I think that's the one thing about RAS scores that people kind of get frustrated about is they look at it and say, well, it's just a metric. Yeah, it is just a metric. It's a really effective metric to be able to tell who has the skill set to make an impact versus somebody who has to get experience to make an impact. And Joe, when you're looking yeah, yeah. at RAS scores, right, just across the board, mm-hmm. like um, here, like Terrell Shavers, as an example, right? He yep. did three on the bench. If you're his agent, yep. Are you telling him to do the bench if he's going to put up sub five? Like, I know it's a wide receiver, right? right? But if you're his agent, are you saying, yeah, go ahead, do the bench. It's fine. Does <laughs> that look fun. fine? <laughs> well, you see on the other side that Jalen Wayne did not do the bench. Like, that's that's the difference between, you know, maybe a smart agent or a smart player and someone who is, you know, th- there's a certain point and maybe – uh, Shavers was at this point where it's like, I want to do everything I can do to improve my draft stock, right? And you're thinking in your head, hey, I could do it all, right? You're 18, 20 years old, whatever it is, you think you're on top of the world, you know you're going to the NFL, you want to get drafted, and then you pull up a three. And remember, the combine, other than the 40 time, they don't let you really go again, right? You have two chances at the 40, that's it. You have two chances at other things. Yeah, two uh, high jump, I think it is broad jump. You have two chances. I don't know how many times they say, yeah, you can try the bench. And also, if you're if you're not familiar with the combine, I think, and you guys can correct me, that's two fifty, right, on the bench. Two twenty five. Two twenty five. Two twenty five. Okay, so it's two twenty five for everybody, right? That's or three Pauls. Four. We call it three <laughs> Pauls. So, so yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, when you look at when you look at the Raz, and then you mm-hmm. look at like you can look at the league average in Razzes, mm-hmm. right? And this is the difference between Jalen Wayne and Tyrell Shavers and why they're talked about differently. Jalen Wayne, you hear things like he played at a small school, didn't have mm-hmm. a lot of tape, you know, mm-hmm. super productive. But again, he played at a small school. Tyler Shavers, the questions come in is, is he an NFL wide receiver? And the reason for that is when you look at the, when you look at the league average comparisons. So I'll just take you down the league average, the 40 league average, 4.49. Mm-hmm. So you look at the difference between the two guys. Mm-hmm. Right. The league average 20 yard split for a wide receiver, 2.61. Right. So mm-hmm. Wayne's right there. Shaver's obviously off 10 yard split, 1.56. Right. So when mm-hmm. you start looking at those things, you look at Wayne and it's like size check 40, 20, 10 yard split. That's an NFL wide receiver. Right. So the questions are, is he played at a small school? What was what was the competition like? Tyler Shaver's. Yeah, he's got the measurables, but he doesn't have the speed even close to what the average would be for an NFL wide receiver. So the question mm-hmm. is, can he physically be an NFL wide receiver? And that's the two differences in what those compare, what that narrative becomes because of this RAS score mm-hmm. versus just looking at the game film and saying, these bo- guys can both play football. They can all play football. That's why they're eligible for the NFL draft, right? That's why we're having mm-hmm. these conversations about them. But when you look deeper into the numbers, this is why Wayne is an undrafted free agent with an inside shot of making an NFL roster versus Tyler Shavers, who, I'm sure he's a great guy. He was a good football player in college. He's probably practice squad. You know, if if he's lucky, he'll he'll latch onto someone's practice squad here um, after after the after the uh, the training camp. Yeah, and I think it's worth to know that that while Ryan does say that it's it's a big deal when in, in determining if the guy could compete at the at this level, I think we have to take it into consideration. Know some of the things where it's not the end all be all of mm-hmm. how they want to do it. Like. Right. Let's for instance, Taiwan Jones, who's no longer a Buffalo Bill, his RAS score was a nine point three. Right. And we me- we mentioned that um, Spencer Browns was a ten. Well, if you added up Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde's RAS scores, they be they're a ten. 
together. Right. You know, you look at you look at some of these. Daquan Jones is a two point four. Mm-hmm. You know, I I mean, if if you if we if the Bills went solely on Raz score, none of these guys mm-hmm. would be on the field. Right. But I think you know you could say like Stephon Diggs five point six six. Okay. You know, I think he's pretty valuable to the Buffalo Bills. Right. But what when you're when you don't know a lot about the kid, that's the only thing that you really have to go on. And that's why the Buffalo Bills, you look at some of the guys that they that that they want physical freaks and athletic freaks. If you don't know that, go check the 2018 draft until now. You know, mm-hmm. when they're unsure about a player, what they do is they get the most physical freak, and this is the score and this is the metric that will help them do that. Right. So that's the biggest thing that we're, I, I guess what I want, what we want you guys to try to take out of this is the fact that look at the players that were drafted and the players that were undrafted and look, mm-hmm. look at that. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's abysmal. Those are my scores. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's yeah. why like undrafted free agent Noah Henderson and undrafted free agent Richard Garage, and that's pronounced Garage, by the way. Um, Stop it. There's no, a not. one and a 1.52, and they did almost every single drill (laughs) right (laughs) like but the reason that these look like this is because their film looks different right the reason they're on the bills is not because they are those athletic players and you're just taking a flyer on them it's because their film looks better than what their RAS score is and that's a player then in the undrafted world to say listen film look good RAS score is a little scary uh if they go undrafted let's let's make a phone call let's see if we can get them here we want to take a look Right. Because, again, a RAS score is just a snapshot in time of how athletic you were on that day. Mm-hmm. Um, your film is months and months or and years over the course of your career. Like Richard Garage last year gave up one sack. One. Mm-hmm. Yet he got a one point five two in, uh, you know, in, in his RAS score. And it's not like he was playing in in a nonsense conference. Right. Yeah. He went mm-hmm. to Florida, <laughs> you know, like it's giving up one sack in that conference. Great job, right? Great job. So again, like RAS score is something that uh, we could talk about as you know being really important, and it is. It is very, very important. As I said, it's both a tool and a weapon. Um, and but it's uh, far more of a weapon. You, you can I make agree the argument that. that it's far more of a negative correlation than a positive one. I positive agree. Positive reaffirms what you see on film. Right, mm-hmm. positive. Yeah, if it's if it's a high raz, it it just validates that that's a, a man playing among boys is the phrase that you hear a lot of thrown around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If oh. you score below a five mm-hmm. on the raz, it's it's by all accounts a death sentence when it comes mm-hmm. to your your draft prospects and your ability to become anything positive in the NFL. I mean, just a, as an example, like when you look at the median raz score for like pro bowlers, right? Pro bowl, not a great measure of success, but it's a good measure of success, right? They're good football players that typically make, that typically make the, uh, the pro bowl, the average RAS score for pro bowlers at the wide receiver position since 2010 is an 8.59. Yeah. So Isn't that you, ridiculous? Look at that. And, and at the wide receiver position, or I'm sorry, at the, uh, you know, we're looking here uh, at the offensive line, right? Offensive guards, only three Pro Bowl offensive guards have scored lower than a six on the mm-hmm. Raz since two thousand since two thousand and ten. So again, anyone below a six, that's a it's you know right. it, it's a death sentence. So you, right. you wonder how long these players are going to be willing to continue to do these types of workouts when they know they won't perform well. If I know I'm only going to get a five on the bench, I'm a wide receiver. The average is a fourteen. Am I going to do the bench the combine? I think that's an honest question that that these you know these teams need to start asking because. How important is this score? Um, because it's it's far less impactful on the positive than it is on the negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And again, like you can look at these scores and then look at a scouting report and say the score this that you could not you maybe didn't even watch film on this guy. You just went to his RAS score and you could write a scouting report just just off these metrics. And uh, you know, it's it's something to be aware of, but. You know, again, it's a snapshot in time of how athletic you were on that day. And, and there's a, a volume of things that could have gone wrong or gone well above your actual ability, right? Like yeah. well above your actual ability. I wonder if Torrance is like, get, get my boy. 
Get they the they were still on the same <laughs> offensive line, though, so you know they had conversations, right? Like they're still talking to each other in, in practice and such. So right. Well, and you know, listen, you got to buy one plane ticket. You might as well buy three. You drafted two other players from Florida. You know, maybe <laughs> yeah. at that point you might as well just charter a jet for them. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, you could get quite you the get, deal you on get, you kayak. Get 10 on, a P, on a PJ, so yeah. on a PJ. Listen to you with the yeah. shorthand. <laughs> Uh, the board wants me to know who has flown in a private jet. <laughs> yeah, right. Flying private isn't isn't that that big of a deal anymore. You can get ten guys that cost like two hundred bucks sure. a person to get a sure. private jet. So not as not as bougie as it used to be. Sure. We got Mr. High Roller down here. I, know I know, right? Jeez, I can't afford to hang out with Ryan. Can, can we afford to have him on the show? I don't know. I haven't sent the invoice to Mario yet. That's why I'm trying to get all the shows in now before the invoice gets to him. The invoice gets to me. He's sending it by, by Rigshaw. <laughs> 